Hello and welcome, Arce Shim in the hangar. Today we will take a closer look at the Creality Falcon 2 Pro Pro device on a budget price. The thing that Creality does quite well. They did it on the 3D market, products similar to the higher priced competition and they just undercut them with similar features, not all the way up to the Pro features of the competition, but to half the price maybe, like low bamboo lab. Before I start this review, there are two disclaimers. First of all, this thing has been sent by Creality for the review, but they didn't see my video beforehand. The opinions here are my own. And the second disclaimer, this is my first laser cutter engraver, so I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I do have a lot of experience in general with tech stuff that I review here on the channel. Drones, 3D printers, tech and computer stuff. I like cameras, I like camera equipment, and I hope you enjoy my content. As always in my videos, I have jump marks in this video. See the different chapters, which will be unboxing, assembly, the first test runs, the first a bit longer cut and engrave job. How does the workflow look? How difficult is it using the software? Which software to use? Spoiler, use Lightburn. And my final thoughts. Okay. It is the train. Yep. It is a laser of class 4. Feels heavy, feels nice. It's the 22 watts version. Some sample materials. Manual. Exhaust tubing. Like the main frame. Those are the rods that you place on the bottom. These red plastic parts, side parts. The fan will then be connected for sure with this fume hose. Some more metal parts, the camera module, top-down facing, the LED bar, aluminum parts for the case, this must be the air pump, which has a really nice feet. <laughs> Power supply, the main shell of course, with the laser already installed, two USB-C cables, an Allen wrench, some screws, this nice little box with the the key, turnkey solution, you see. USB card reader and more tools. Brush. Very well protected. Emergency button situation. I will study the manual. At any time in this review, if it's too much for you, just press the stop button. Sticker on the <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, I cut it with a sharpie, but very carefully not to cut the plastic. And now we get rid of this one sticker as well. Insert this in the inner track. And it also already derailed. Five hours later. This one actually had a good chance of me freaking out. <laughs> it, it, it's okay. Maybe it's better if you connect this rod first and then slide it in, because then you have a good support. If you are inserting the slidey door, you use the outer rail, not the inner. And this one was a bit easier because it had more stability. The rest of this is really just a lot of screws, so make sure to have a power drill. A bit easier. It's a lot of reviews on my channel about tech stuff. Normally drones in the not so nice season, I get distracted by other things like laser cutters. Mm -hmm. Okay, this thing is a dust magnet, that's for sure. Now this of course was easy, just a bit tedious. You just place those metal rods. You can also use wider open for large objects to cover the whole area. They are all the way away. But you can of course also use the, the flat end up, which minimizes the amount of wear on them. And you can also use them in, in flat mode, if you need extra support for really small and brittle stuff that you will engrave. This is the first test calibration sheet, which is rather large, 50 by 50. This takes longer than I thought. Oh. Crisscross. I think that's it. So I'm using light burn here and I, I think I can already recommend that you also use light burn. Place the circle uh, template in the center. Take a picture 
then in all corners as instructed. And the, the most important thing for me here was to set the camera as not wide angle but linear. And then it worked. Marker 3, double click in the center of this marker and now marker 4. So you click 4, calibration cubes, align the camera image with the actual build volume image. And the nice thing now is I can there, like so, update overlay and then it's there. And this helps you to really position your object nicely onto the engraving or cutting object. And by the way, the workflow is very, very nice. I have two USB-C cables, one connected to the camera module up there and one connected to the printer itself. On the laptop, I run Lightburn. And I found a way to get it with a cheaper license code and with a coupon code for $50 or 50 euros. Seems to be a fair price. So after this one month's test, I think I would buy the Lightburn software. Camera alignment works really, really nice for engraving on wood. 6000 as the speed and 40% laser power. For engraving you should turn off air and then you just hit the start. We are engraving a tree in a tree. Turned out beautifully and even if you see the, uh, the plane is skewed. Maybe it looks different here than here. So the focus is a bit off on these leaves because I think I set the focus around here, this little focus helper. It looks quite correct. Okay, I was a bit quick to start this. My idea is now to cut the scuddy spec board. First of all here I forgot the air. And now I will have to align these two holes with the remaining holes. Not too hard with a good calibrated cam. Right, five millimeters and down two or so. Let's try just this. Let's see. Now you hit Alt and C. Well, almost there. You can zoom in quite a lot. So 230, full power. <laughs> and I'm excited to press. Once you close the protective cover lid, the magnet here will give the computer a go. If not, you see the light is out. It's a little safety feature. There's also a key, so you can use the key to just use it when you want to, and not your kids or something like this. The fan that blows out the fume out of the window. It's not ideal, but it keeps the ugly smell out. There is the air pump for the first longer project. I will also get my extra laser protective goggles on. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Start it. And look at that. The air pump is to the max. Do you have any idea how expensive these damn pack boards are? and how inconvenient they are to print on a 3D printer and how easy and fast they are to produce on a laser cutter. 40x40 40 40 is hard on a 3D printer. It's rather 30x30 30 30 on this here and it took me 6 or 8 hours to print this little one, the, the white one here. And my plans are to fill this hole here with a wood pegboard. <laughs> very, very cool. Okay, so some of them actually fall down and some are not 100% cut, but it's fine. Here, you see the remaining time? I didn't notice this earlier. It really smells like burnt wood, it smells a bit bad. Through. Where's the back side? That's even better. There we have a branch area. Of course, that's a bit of a downside, but it's also some personality to this backboard. And the rest of those things can be. Do those hooks fit there? Oh, yeah! <laughs> You, actually, they fit tight. They don't have... Which this has is this slight curve around the holes. But on this, 
Yeah, it's perfect and it's such a cheap. I don't know what these kind of wood sheets cost. 18 or 20 dollars from IKEA. So you can save a lot here. This is the aftermath of my cut job. And there seems to be also the downside. Yeah, you burn away the paint coating of this tray quite soon. Of course, this is quite thick steel plate, so it's just an optic optical problem, I guess. Trying to engrave something on my lipo bag. I can smell burnt rubber. You never know what color it will be, but it has a yellowish, greenish tint in this lipo bag. But I think these settings work quite well. Max speed from light burn and and 100%. I like it. And although it's it was never f a flat surface, but a bit of wavy surface, it looks good. Except for the last exclamation mark. I really like how easy you can label something. That's me trying to engrave something on a tin box and it works pretty well. That's the outcome. Totally awesome. Yeah, so I, I cleaned it with the cloth a bit and there's totally some rust on it, so it should be the same. Those little circles were just me trying to find a good positioning and in the center you have the least amount of distortion so the placement will be best there. I was a bit cautious though or concerned if a, a reflective thing like this here, almost reflective, if this will fire back into the laser but yeah I just tried it and you see I had not the best placement there so I cut a bit into the pen. And quite suitable for the nozzle box. The nozzles is written from me. It worked like a charm. Still with the speed of 900 and 100% laser power on the 22 watt laser. Okay, now that we're in the final thought section, please excuse the mess in my office. This thing is not small, so consider this. I put the exact dimensions in, in the description in the bottom. In general there's a lot of information in my info box. It's not fully scattered with affiliate links so I get money out of you. It's filled with information that I collected and that I'm eager to share with you. It's a bit large. It's well built. The downsides maybe are it smells but this is an inherent problem of shooting bundled diode light through a lens on your cutting object by melting it away, <laughs> so that's, that produces some fumes. But they integrated a fan here and this hose, which works surprisingly well. It's a bit like your washer dryer situation. You hang it out of the window and the ugly smells, the ugly fume is blown away. The fan is loud, of course. You can leave it on the on or you have it on auto. This little air pump has a hose directly pumping a lot of air to the cutting area to blow away the smoke and to cool it so no flames or no burning effects can, can occur. The top case that you can buy as an accessory also for the normal version. First it feels a bit, a, fit, a bit fiddly, a bit weird and a bit cheap to be honest. Once it's screwed together it's really rigid. You have good visibility all around. You have protection through this red plastic. But nonetheless you should really take care not to have any reflections hitting your eyes. So additionally Wear the safety goggles. If you want to be extra cautious, buy good ones that have a, a certificate because those are just cheap plastic thingies. I don't know if they really protect you, but it's better than nothing. The overall process for me as a beginner, and maybe this will be your first laser cut as well, was surprisingly easy. Don't place it in your basement where you maybe have no chance to get the bad fumes and the toxic fumes out. Uh, it might harm you. Yeah, then there are a lot of tips can be found in the info box as well, of course. A few of the more important tips are use the air pump. Cutting means air on and engraving normally means air off. Focus the laser. It's a manual focus laser. You have to focus this yourself by these screws and focus helper. It's like, yeah, it's the really easy solution, but it works. Don't forget to focus correctly. The basics of how this works is the slower the movement speed and the higher the laser power, the deeper you cut. That's, that's kind of logic. And if you engrave, you have higher movement speeds and lower cutting power. 
and then it only touches the surface and makes some markings, engraving. Engraving is not always easy, especially it's hard on reflective surfaces like pure metal. There you sometimes have to use spray paint, then you can engrave and then you wash away the spray paint with acetone and then it kind of looks like engraving. So it's not always easy. The easiest of course is wood. It's soft and it's non-reflective so it totally works with lasers. But I also will try a lot of other materials and I will just publish a few shorts to show you the things that I've done with the laser cutter in the next few weeks. So make sure to subscribe and I hope by now you have realized that you need to subscribe to this channel. Thanks a lot. And also give me the thumbs up and please, please let me know in the comments how you liked this video. What do you think about those products? Do you have a laser cutter yourself? Let me know your experience. I can learn a lot. Uh, other guys that read through the comments can learn from it. And also if you have any issues with with such a device, I will try my best to answer those questions. Oh yes, and we talked a bit about security already. Protect your eyes, of course. But what's nice here is, although this is a class 4 laser by itself, since it's encased and has a few protective switches, it's now a class 1 laser. It's not so much an issue for you if you use this as a private consumer, but if you use it as a company, this might, there might be workplace limitations or regulations. The moment when you open the lid, the laser will stop because it has this magnet here. You also can hit this stop button at any time if something bad happens. It has fire detection, a lens being dirty detection. <laughs> it detects if the air pump doesn't work because maybe the hose fell out or something like this. So there are a lot of sensors that prevent the worst case scenario, something burning in your shop. If I had to leave it unattended, I'd at least place a webcam to monitor the whole process. The jobs that I've done so far were not so long that I had to leave it alone like a 3D printer, so that's okay. What takes longer here is if you do engraving because it does it with a really really high resolution and like a 10 by 15 photo took 12 minutes. So overall I can say the whole experience with the laser cutter so far was really excellent. I will of course do a follow-up video in a month or so when I have more experience within. Maybe discovered some bad things that I didn't know yet. Big shout outs to all my loyal fans that watch all of my videos. Hello Mario from Brazil, I'm talking about you and a lot of other guys. It's, it's a pleasure to upload stuff and knowing I will get feedback from the crew. I'm quite sure that my next video will be a drone compilation once again because I had a lot of fun flying drones in February and March. So stay tuned for this. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.